Alright, today we are going to be making our own gaskets for the thermostat housing on my 57. Um, this is a little trick um, that I know. Um, this trick only works if you buy the gasket paper in advance. Um, so um, it would not do you any good to need to buy this when you need it. Uh, to go buy this when you need, the, need it. Um, because uh, let's say you're changing out a water pump and it didn't come with the gaskets and I've had that happen in the past. And if the vehicle you have the old water pump off of um, doesn't, uh, has the water pump off, you can't go out and buy some. I mean, they do sell these at parts stores. Um, but it's best to buy this in advance and have it for when you need it um, in advance. Just put it in your toolbox, you're good to go. I'll leave a link on Amazon where you can buy it. It's like 10 bucks. Uh, it comes in several sheets. This particular one came in a roll. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, I have a little bit of a coolant leak here at my thermostat housing. Um, and the reason why is when I changed out my thermostat a little while ago, I, had, I didn't have the right type of silicone. Um, but I used the red stuff because that's what I had available. Figured it was better than nothing. Um, it's not too terrible of a leak. Um, but if your coolant system isn't fully sealed, you're going to run a little bit hotter. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. Okay, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to drain my radiator, not completely, just enough past the thermostat housing, just a little bit below that. Um, so I'm going to have to drain the whole radiator or a whole coolant system, just enough so I don't make a mess. I'm just going to go ahead and undo my petcock here. And I do have a drain pan underneath. So go ahead and let that drain and we'll be back. Okay, got the thermostat housing off. I got it cleaned up with my gasket scraper. Right here, okay. I got it dried off. I already got the thermostat pulled out. And uh, if you ever don't know what temperature your thermostat is, it says it right there on the bottom. This is 180 degrees. Okay. And it goes in there like that. We can just set that in there for now. Okay. Now we're going to work on thermostat housing. And get it cleaned up with the gasket scraper. And I'll show you how to make the new gasket for it. Okay, got the thermostat housing cleaned up. Um, I'm not a big fan of this. Um, it looks to be a little bit warped. Um, and it's even starting to corrode here where the bolts go in. Um, so hopefully this, this will fix it. If I still get leaks after this, I'll probably just get myself a new thermostat housing. It's cheap, made in Taiwan, but I bought it because it was chrome. Um, anyway, so for this you'll need, I already cut off a piece of my gasket paper. You'll need the part that you need to make the gasket for. Gasket paper cut a little bit bigger than the part you need. And a ball peen hammer. And I'll show you why. So first, I'm not, I'm not going to do the whole thing right now, but I'll show you how to get it started, and then I'll get it up, and then, I'll, then we'll move on to the next step. So you hold the part. Up against the paper as tight as you can. Then you take the flat side of the ball peen hammer and start hitting against the side of it. I'll show you here. That sharp machine edge starts to cut the paper. Like that. See? Now I'm going to finish this up and show you what the next step is. All right, I'm back. As you can see here, there's my gasket paper. And that's that's all done with a hammer. I did not use a pair of scissors for that. And then here is my thermostat housing. Okay, it's cut exactly to that. Now, what we need to do, we have to worry about the bolt holes and obviously the hole where the thermostat's gonna go. So that's where you're gonna use the rounded end of the ball peen hammer and holding it up against the part 
You're going to use the rounded end and go back and forth with it like that. And you're going to start to cut that hole. I'm going to finish this up and show you the results. Okay, and here's the final results. Still got to take out this last tab right here that got cut out. And basically, what that rounded end on the ball peen hammer does is it creates a perforated edge to make your cut. Okay, now the more perfectly machined a part's edge is, the easier this job is. Um, this particular job wasn't so easy because these ends are kind of rounded off so it made it a little bit of a duller cut for the paper but it still worked. Um, in fact I ended up having to kind of tapping it with the ball peen hammer and all around the edges uh, to get a nice perforated line um, but it only took me a couple minutes and there it is. So now we're going to go ahead and put the silicone on and the thermostat housing back on okay have the thermostat on with the correct silicone on it i even uh, did my best to sop up all the coolant that was sitting here on top of this intake so that when i fill it back up and start it um, i can see if i have any new leaks i did notice that this bolt right here bottomed out and it's still um, had some height to it. Um, looks like it was longer than the other bolt that I had in there. So I took some washers just so that it would push down. That cause also could have been a problem while I was having a little bit of a leak. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, I'm not going to fill up the coolant just yet. I'm going to let that silicone sit for a couple hours and make sure it sets. Then I will be putting the uh, coolant in and starting it up. So, uh, it's going to take me a couple hours, but uh, you guys will be there in one cut. Okay, so um, I always like to buy my antifreeze in concentrate um, because you can get two gallons of coolant out of that versus the pre-mixed, um, that's already 50-50, that's only one gallon. Um, but I do have a 50-50 ready-to-use bottle because um, the best way for me to remember if something's been mixed or not is to never add water to the concentrate bottles and to always mix them in these 50-50 bottles. This way, um, whenever I need to use antifreeze again, if I see that that's concentrate, I just know that that's always concentrate um, and that's always 50-50 mix. Anyways, I have it all mixed up. Got the radiator topped off. Go ahead and start it up, get the temperature. Alright, this is what I love about having a mechanical temperature gauge on my vehicle. Um, I mean, it does have the electric one, but it's not as accurate. So you can see when that thermostat opens up. You also know what temperature your engine is at all times. Start to open up probably around 190, a little bit past 190. Oh, it looks like it already opened up. See how it's dropping now? Because that thermostat opened up and that cool antifreeze and the radiator is now in the engine block and it's cooling it off. We're now at temperature and we're going to go check the thermostat housing. Okay, everything seems to look good. We don't have any coolant leaking out. Looks like we got it fixed. Alright, thanks for watching.